Hi, welcome to the Yale University Art Gallery in New Haven, Connecticut. Come on in and have a seat. This is Stories in Art. Please feel free to pause the video whenever you'd like to get a closer look at the artwork. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Jin Hee. I'm a gallery teacher at the Yale University Art Gallery. Today, I'm going to tell a story that has been adapted from a Greco-Roman myth known by the title of Cupid and Psyche. The story was originally written in the second century AD by Apuleius. Today, we will be looking at an engraving made in 16th century Italy called Proserpina Gives Psyche the Box of Beauty from the series Fables of Psyche. Take a close look. What do you notice? I notice there are two people sitting outside in the dark. It looks to me like they're wearing long flowing clothing. I wonder where they are and why is it so dark? We will also look at two French enamel designs attributed to the artist Pierre Cortez that would decorate a small purse about the size of my hand. Take a close look. What do you notice? I notice the bright blue and purple colors. I also see people in each of the artworks. In the one on the left, an older woman is telling a story, just like I'm doing today. As I tell the story, keep looking and see what else you notice. Once upon a time, a king and a queen had a daughter named Psyche. Psyche was loyal, kind, and smart. She was also stunningly beautiful. Many people often said she was as beautiful as Aphrodite, the goddess of love. This made Aphrodite very jealous and angry, and she swore that one day she would punish Psyche for being so beautiful. One evening, as the sun was setting, Psyche was out for a walk near the sea. It was such a pleasant evening that she didn't realize how late it was getting, and soon it was dark. In the darkness, she stumbled and her foot got caught in a rocky crevice. She was trapped and couldn't get unstuck. She started to hear the sounds of the night animals, which scared her and she called out for help. It just so happened that Cupid, the son of Aphrodite, heard her cries and went to investigate. As soon as he saw Psyche, he fell in love with her. Since Cupid was a god, he easily moved the stones trapping Psyche's foot. Psyche said, Good sir, thank you for rescuing me. I can't imagine what would have happened if I had been trapped here all night. Cupid replied, I'm glad I was nearby. I hope you will talk to me longer. May I walk you home? Psyche replied, Yes, I will like that. I wish I could see your face. It is so dark, I can only see shadows. But Cupid responded, Even when it's light outside, it's still very important that you never look at my face. Psyche was a little confused by this request, but she promised never to look at his face. She didn't realize that Cupid was a god, and that this promise was for her own protection. Bad things could happen to mortals who looked into the faces of gods. As happens in many stories, they soon fell in love and were married. Cupid visited Psyche every evening to spend time with her. Psyche was curious to see what her husband looked like, but she kept her promise not to look at him. Cupid was a wonderful husband. He was gentle, loving, and caring. He provided for her a beautiful palace decorated with precious jewels and flowers and gave many lovely gifts. During the days when Cupid was away, Psyche spent time with her attendants and with her sisters. The Psyche's two sisters became jealous of her and started to ask questions like, Why would your husband not let you see his face? He's probably lying about who he is and is actually a hideous monster. I wonder what else he is hiding. Although Psyche tried to defend Cupid, her sister's comments started to weigh on her and she couldn't get them out of her mind. She started to worry that perhaps they were right, and her husband wasn't the wonderful person she thought he was. One night, 
she decided to find out her husband's identity with her own eyes. While her husband was asleep, she took a candle to the bed and shone the light to his face. She was prepared to run away and never look back if he was a monster. However, what she saw was not a monster, but the handsome face of a god. While Psyche stood admiring her husband's good looks, Cupid suddenly opened his eyes and saw Psyche. Shocked and feeling betrayed, Cupid cried, Why did you look? You promised you wouldn't. Although Psyche tearfully apologized and pleaded with him to stay, Cupid did not listen. Cupid returned to his mother, Aphrodite, and Psyche was left all alone in the palace. Psyche was very sad, but made up her mind that she would win back her husband no matter what it took. Psyche decided to ask Aphrodite, Cupid's mother, for help. She didn't realize Aphrodite hated her and was jealous of her beauty. Aphrodite said, If you complete the tasks I give you, I'll accept your marriage with Cupid and help you win back his trust. She secretly wanted to torment Psyche and make it impossible for her to ever meet Cupid again. However, Aphrodite underestimated Psyche's determination, intelligence, and courage. Aphrodite had only seen Psyche as a pretty face and didn't realize there was so much more to her. Psyche was able to complete several of the tasks with the help of the other gods who took pity on her. The final task was the most difficult. She had to go to the world of the dead and get a beauty ointment from Persephone, the queen of the underworld. It sounded like an impossible task to Psyche. No human had ever made the trip there and returned alive. But she had come so far and was not willing to give up now. Before she traveled to the underworld, she was looking for advice and found a magical wise tower. The tower told her how to safely sneak by Cerberus, the vicious three-headed guard dog. Psyche carefully followed the advice she was given and safely arrived in the underworld. There was swirling darkness and Persephone sat in front of a large stone castle. Persephone asked, Human, what are you doing in my kingdom? Don't you know this is no place for the living? Psyche kneeled before Persephone and answered, My name is Psyche, and I am here to complete the last task given to me by Aphrodite in order to get her blessing on my marriage and win back the love of my husband, Cupid. I made a terrible mistake, and he has left me. I must ask you for the box with your beauty ointment so that I can be reunited with my love. Persephone was intrigued and asked Psyche to tell more of her tale. Psyche told her everything about Cupid and pleaded for Persephone's help. Persephone thought about it and then gave her the box with the beauty ointment. On her way back to Aphrodite to deliver the ointment, Psyche became curious about the magic of the ointment in the box. She said to herself, I look worn out from all my traveling. I want to look beautiful when Cupid sees me. I'm sure taking a bit of the ointment for myself will do no harm. She slowly opened the box to take a look at what was inside, and she suddenly collapsed. The ointment was a beauty cream for goddesses, but it was too strong for mortals. Failing to complete her last task, Psyche fell into a deep sleep. When Cupid heard of what had happened, he immediately flew to Psyche and took her in his arms. Then he flew to Zeus, the most powerful god of all, and asked him for help. Taking pity on Cupid and Psyche, Zeus met with Aphrodite and convinced her that she had been too harsh towards Psyche. He brought Psyche back to life and gave her ambrosia to drink, which made her immortal like the other gods and goddesses. As a result, Psyche became a goddess and she and Cupid, her husband, lived together forever. The End In this artwork, we only see the outside of a building, but I wonder what the rest of the underworld looks like. What do you think would be there?
Take a paper and pencil and draw what you imagine. Hope you have fun. Thank you for joining us for Stories in Art at the Yale University Art Gallery. We hope you enjoyed listening and looking with our storyteller.